What's up, everybody? My name is Matt Chiquan, a.k.a. Recluse, and I'm here at our Roland studio in Brooklyn, uh, where we host our regular DJ Cloud Academy courses to show you the new firmware update, system version 1.10. I'm going to show you how to install it on your DJ 505, as well as what the features are and how you can activate them and what they actually do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to uh, our product page, and you're going to look for a link that says DJ 505 system program version 1.10. If you search uh, DJ 505 firmware, it will be very easy to navigate to this page. Um, scroll down, you can see an update history and some instructions on how to install that. You're not going to need to worry about that today because I'm going to show you how to do it myself, but you can always refer back to it. Click on the I agree and wish to proceed with download and then click on download file. I've already done that. And on my desktop here, uh, I have a zip file, which I've double clicked to unzip. And now I have a folder. Within that folder, I have a DJ202 and DJ505 bin file. That actually will be the same file you'd use to update your DJ202 if you own that as well. So the next thing we're going to want to do is head on over to our DJ505. We're going to power it down. Now it's connected to the computer. Uh, we're going to hold clear, and we're going to turn the power back on. And it's letting us know over here that we're connect, connected to the computer. If we slide over to the computer again, you can see that we now have a Roland uh, drive icon. And we're going to click on the bin file, making sure that it's not that zip file. We want the bin file, and we're going to drag and drop that to the Roland drive icon. Once it's copied over, you can eject that. I was drag and drop it to the trash as well. It's going to take a sec. And then when we're done with that, there we go. We unplug the USB from the computer. And you might have to hit clear again, but usually when you unplug it from the computer, the update starts automatically. So it's going to take about, well, look at that. It only took about 15 seconds there. So we're all done, ready to go. So next we're going to power down. And let's just power it back up real quick to make sure we're good to go. And it's going to complete the firmware update here. You're going to see these, uh, your performance pads lighting up in, in a green checkered pattern. There we go. And we're good to go. We're back. So the next thing you want to do before you actually get into this is um, you're going to want to do a factory reset. Because if you don't, you might get some erratic behavior from your controller. It's going to start glitching out potentially. So what you do is you hold load one. And you power back up. It's going to take a second. And then it says FACT, factory reset. You hit start. And it's going to take, look at that, five seconds, and we're good to go. Now, before you do that, I just want to let you know that if you do have your patterns on your TR that you want to save, refer to the system settings. Uh, in the manual on how to do that because it will overwrite your patterns and put the factory uh, preset patterns on there. Okay, now that we've actually done the firmware update and the factory reset, let's come back to the 505 and see what new features we have. The first thing I want to show you is we've added some new sounds, some new kits to our TRS section. So as you probably knew, we had um, the 808 and the 909 installed in there before, um, and we, we've now added the 707 and 606 kits as well. So to access that, you'd hold Shift and press Instrument to get to the kit right here. And the first one is our 808, which was already there, the 909, and then we have the 707. and the 606. Now adding those four kits has brought our total kit count to 12. And what we see after that are basically combination kits. So five through 12 are combination kits using sounds from the four main kits, the 808, 909, 707, 606. Okay, also on the TRS, we've added some new TRS master effects. Those are accessed by going to the kit mode holding shift and press instrument. The instrument button's going to blink. And our parameter knobs over here 
now control some new effects that will be applied to all of the TRS sounds that are playing. So the attack becomes compression, the tuning becomes distortion, and the decay becomes transient. So let's have a listen to the 606 kit. This is a preset pattern that we have from our factory reset. And this is unaffected at the moment. We can add some compression. Some distortion. And some transient. So that compression is just going to even out the dynamics and really bring it up in volume. Might help it sit in your mix a little bit better. The distortion is going to grit that up, make it kind of dirty sounding, if you like that, that, that feel. And then this transient is going to add a bit of clarity and punch to it as well. Also in the TRS section, we've added a very cool new feature called Loop Step. To access that, you hold Shift and press Scale. This is also where you can set your last step on your sequencer if you didn't know about that feature. But we're specifically interested in this new feature called Step Loop. Let's hit Start and have a listen to the pattern. Now any step that I hold in this mode is going to repeat. Check this out. Pretty cool, really easy way to improv, add some fills to what you're doing. Now I'm just at the moment holding one step. You can hold multiple steps as well, so check this out. And then when I stop playing it, it's gonna go back to where it was. You can also use a latch mode. So that mode right there is called unlatched. If we hold shift and press a number of steps, it's going to hold it. And then just press any step again to get out of that latch mode. We've also added the ability to reset your kit. So you can go to your kit section and basically select uh, a kit. So say you've been messing around and you made a hybrid kit on your 808, but you want to revert to that. Uh, what you do is hold shift instrument to get to our kit mode, which we're currently in, and then hold the pad that you want to reset. And you can turn the data wheel here, the value wheel rather, and you can get to any of the kits, 606, 707, 808, 909. So we'd reset that to the 808. And there we go. You have a listen. You can also copy your kit. So if you've made a kit uh, and you want to store it somewhere else, say we've made some uh, a hybrid kit, we've selected some sounds from the other kits and made some kind of hybrid kit, and then we want to, say, uh, copy that somewhere, what you do is, again, go into kit mode by pressing Shift and pressing Instrument, and then uh, press Shift. And then the kit you want to copy, and then you can see all the steps are lit up, and then you can decide which slot you want to move it to. So say we're going to copy it to 12. There we go. And then we maybe want to reset that back to the 808 kit, just like that. The rest of the firmware update features are accessible in the system settings mode. So to get there, we're going to have to turn off the power, hold load to, and power back up. See, we're now in the system setting mode. Now, the first thing we've added is the ability to change the pad sensitivity. So in this mode, you press the first pad on the left deck, and we see a setting of 20. So for the pad sensitivity, you can go all the way up to 30 and down to 0. The default is 20. So if you want it to be more sensitive, you can go up to 30. And if you want it to be less sensitive, you can go down to 0. I'm going to leave it at 20. Next up on pad 2, 
you can change the jog wheel release response setting. So if you are cutting and you want to change the feel of it, how it releases, you can do that by pressing number two here. And we see we have different settings, normal, level one, two, three, four, five. And this is something you probably just want to experiment with. If you're not getting the, the response that you want, you could try one of these different settings and see how it works out for you. And then finally, uh, we've added the ability to adjust the backspin setting. Um, so how long it's going to backspin. And you press pad number three while in system setting mode. You see it says off, uh, which doesn't mean you're not going to get a backspin if you throw the platter back, uh, but it's just not going to be very long. So let's one more time press th number three, pad three, and we see off, and then we have short, normal, long. So just for effect, let's set it to long. Now, anytime you set any system settings, you want to hit start, and it's going to take a minute to change the settings, and it's complete, and now you're going to want to power off and power back up. And now let's check out the backspin setting. Pretty extreme, so we really Criscoed up our platters there. Um, so that's about it for the DJ505 firmware update. New sounds, new kits, new performance features, and a new customization settings. So hope you have fun with that, and uh, yeah, get into it. This video is brought to you by the Roland DJ Cloud Academy, available to all registered Roland DJ customers. Head on over to our landing page to learn more about our classes and to register for sessions held throughout the month.